Welcome back to Let's Play Hand of Fate. In the last session, the last queen fell to our blade and to our lightning. How bare my cabinet now looks. I have saved much for this moment. The King of Plague will be our opponent today. These curses are very nasty indeed. Time distortion sounds great. Moving faster and receiving damage is a double-edged sword, so it could quickly turn against us. And Wrath of Food is just dodge -rama. All dodging, all day, every day, or we will die. He has grown in the dark, surviving every challenge and feasting upon the bones of every single failure. And on top of that, the King of Plague is quite nasty. Our equipment and encounter deck has grown slightly. I have already set it with some new equipment and some new encounters, some of which we need to get the tokens for. We are still the Merchant Guard. The King will not respond to your normal tactics. In fact, he will make you work harder for less gain than ever. So much destruction you have wrought. Once this is done and the Rat King chews upon your bones, it will be an age before I can find new pieces to face those who come to play. Yeah, yeah. All right, then. What do we start off with? Innocence again. Very good start. As pleases you. And Wrath of the Old Gods, which served us fantastically last time. May it do the same this time. In this case, to be fair, you are intruding into their home. Last time we boldly entered the cave. But this time, why not try to hide? Choose from these options. Sadly, our hiding was not successful. This was one of the possible outcomes of last time if we had chosen to hide in the cave. Success would mean no event. But hey, this is a fantastic time to talk about only dodging. I can bash with my shield, which is good. But I can never counterattack with my shield, or I will quickly run out of food. A nasty constraint, even for the Merchant Guard. Or perhaps especially for the Merchant Guard. And you can see, something I didn't quite get to show off in the last video, that the skeletons regenerating is a real problem. Makes the combat drag on a little bit, and... Really is a pain. I'm already getting hit. Thankfully, fighting does give you some gain cards here. I'm sure you are grateful for that. And another source of food. Let's go ahead. Blessings can always be useful. I made that a little too powerful. I will have to rebalance that next time. 
We play for a token now. How about that? More merchants in distress. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, Wrath of the Old Gods will be fantastic. Since... God, we're gonna suffer so much. The traps here are gonna be nice. And thankfully, the bandits keep triggering them. And even I'm running into them. Just the loss of being able to counter really kind of puts you in a bind. It changes how I hold the mouse slightly, changes how I put my hands on the keyboard. And now, we could put the bandit out of his misery, but we want to know more. And this is exactly what we need. Success is not good enough. Failure is bad. Huge success nets us a token. Unpleasant. I'd say still worth it. And we get to try out the Skeleton King's sword for once. You cannot eat gold, you know. Looks like the traveling tinker accidentally got revealed twice. I have been confident, perhaps complacent. Yet, these final opponents I assembled in ages past specifically to hold against the greatest challenges. You cannot possibly hope to defeat them. Foodwagon is fortunate. I can't counter, the mages become quite a bit deadlier. Homing attacks are not a lot of fun, as you can see. So instead, I've got to try to just deal with them as quickly as possible and use the Skeleton King Sword to my advantage. And you can see, it's pretty powerful. Just to make sure not to get caught and not to step in those lines, which is easy to do if you're just following through with a combo. It would have been smarter to just stay there and wait for my ability to recharge. But that's no fun, is it? Our gold situation is definitely not like the last run. Maybe we can see a couple new items here, like the Guildmaster's Ring, a ring that's been in our deck for quite a while, just new, unseen. Even plus one food is nice. The Guildmaster's Ring is not the... It's not just beneficial here. It does interact with another fate. In our case, we don't really care. 
Instead, let me take advantage of low food prices. And uh, move on. Nomad's Desert, I put it in the deck because we hadn't actually gone to the non-fate version of the card. But our resources are low enough, I don't feel confident. And a winding trail is just a way of waylaying us. Oh, I look forward to this already. What brings you to play the game? Ha, I know you will not tell me. Like all the rest, you are silent. The Lizard Dome is back again. I'll fight through. Unless something really interesting happens, I'll see you on the other end. The undead do tend to rise again. More health to work with. Much good meat, do you? There's nobody left to free. With that, we've got a little bit more food, and all I got was a little bit singed from a trap. Trade and negotiation. Without these, life would be boring and short. We absolutely need to do this in order to get the token. It's a little tight. We could get very much hurt by this and we could die in the run, but I would like to try unlocking the token. I don't need a helmet. I'm going to keep my helmet for the fate, and we've got a good shield, so let's try armor. Armor of cold is not super great. Heavy armor will be good here, because I want the protection. But let's keep it. I can always sell it. And looks like we've got an unlock. And finally, following up on the druid's quest. A final encounter with the druids. Or is it? Small typo. Also, this looks suspicious as hell. Real suspicious. But who can resist gold? Jeez, that's that's lovely. Really, you didn't have to. Shame to see a piece that has been vanquished yet refuses to leave the board. We don't have our equipment because they took it and the lich is here and the lightning strike didn't take the lich out That's absolutely lovely And everything hurts 
See, the Lich is actually a little bit more dangerous here, too. There's nothing on the board, but the speed of the Lich makes it really annoying to deal with. My only real hope is to try and pressure the Lich, dodge, just keep at it. Thank goodness that's over with. Uh, now, what do we have here? The immovable object. With the help of this armor, one man defeated an entire army, only to drop dead the moment it was removed. I think this is very lovely. Really? Is that what you're going to do? With a fantastic little Ubisoft reference here, we have something which will give us more gold. Which, to be fair, I do want. Finally, an opportunity to eat. All right, let's sell, sell, sell. In the ambush fight, I noticed this is one of the few times that the game did not re-equip the Skeleton King sword or the shield. Sorry, the sword, weapon, shield that I had before. Eh, it wasn't a very good fight. Not the worst either. But at this point... Okay, I'm good. Absolutely nothing new, not enough gold. Every living thing must eat or die. So, let's not make the mistake I made before, and let's make sure everything is actually properly equipped. Fantastic. Give me your money. Better than trudging along a muddy road, certainly. Did you expect me to tell your fortune? No. A fortune teller is at their most base and despicable when they begin to believe their own lies. Of course, I am different. My powers are genuine. Mark of the Serpent. There is no doubt that you have traveled an interesting road, adventurer. What should we do here? Has being an adventurer taught us anything? Selling it is good for money, uh, but you won't actually get anything out of the encounter that's uh, of any real value. Opening it is far more interesting.
Oh dear. The scorpion sting can be avoided if you have toxic blood. The blessing. We do not. Instead, we just have to contend with a little bit of pain. Little pleases me more than watching your attempt to wriggle away from bad luck. I'm curious to see what equipment he has here, especially since there are a few pieces of equipment I want to try to deal with. Ah, and Dark Crystal is down there. Caves and caverns. One cannot hope to find adventure without a little delving now. Let's risk our food here. Ah, uh, good. Mercenary contract could be useful, and it's almost certainly what I'm going to get. Let me just confirm. Extra damage could be good. I'm sure you've learned how valuable resources are by now. Receiving 45% extra food is no joke, and were it not for my self-imposed uh, merchant's favor a condition, I would use it. Instead, I'm going to bank on money. What an ignominious way to go. I do hope you find something to eat soon. Of course I'll help. And now, we are in pain. All sorts of terrible things live in caves. Are you sure? Well, we know where we're going last. And maybe I'll be able to get enough food for all of this. At their heart, all games are about power. Are they not? The acquiring of power. The retaining of power. And most importantly, the use of power. Thing I want to show off here in this fight as this bandit gets hit. So, merchant's mercenary contract was beautiful. Let me build up gold. I think my food problems are over. But my health problems are not. The Skeleton King Sword has a nice ability, but without countering, it's very hard to get to the uh, higher tier attacks. I would need Warcry to really help me out. A chance to buy more food. You must be relieved. Absolutely. And this is exactly what we want. I'm sure you are grateful for that. Occult Reflection is... Light Armor. That is nice if we were going against Undead. And again, nice if you plan on getting hit. 
well, nobody really plans on getting hit. But if you get hit a lot, could be good. But you know what? Just to be safe. I think we have enough for now. Just in case. Okay, no ambush. Fantastic, I'll take a quick look and then I should be on my way. Let's see how much the curses in this dungeon go for. 180 gold. These are not impossible to get rid of. If I really wanted to get rid of Wrath of Food, I suppose I could have. But not today. The old gods. I trust them even less than the new gods. The Oracle. The wandering minstrels told us about this Oracle. Let's go see her. A choice. Select your desire. Good thing we have any gold at all. This encounter is interesting. It gives us a glimpse as to what we can see next. And I can see quite a few things here that I definitely want. Interesting. And these are curses waiting for us. If they come up, we'll see them. Let's be a greedy little adventure again. Treasure is nice. Still not a mimic, thankfully. Ah, we have almost enough. Can't buy off the curses. Let me just double check something quick. Okay, I wanted to see about blessings. Call for the priest, I forgot, is what will give us blessings. But in the meantime, we have the second encounter with the white minotaur. We already got its token. So if we survive this fight, we'll get something very special. And hey, is our blessing luck with us again? Let's take a look. We have a new beautiful green field. And Wrath of the Old Gods hits again.
the white minotaur mace is the ultimate reward for the white minotaur quest line from the dlc it's a really nice mace especially with the ice effect and if i were going against lizardmen and i were a little bit more mobile and they were a little slower it would be nice but i'd like to think i learned my lesson i will not be using it are you sure that's the right approach Oh, well, whatever was under there is, uh, hopefully pretty good. Now, the Collector is special. Because we actually want to equip the mace. In the meantime, buying blessings is what I want. Except none of these blessings are actually what I want. Arcane knowledge is somewhat okay. Will of the Gods is just okay. I can't really remove the curses from here, but I have a trick. By having the special mace equipped, this encounter becomes active. Failing to have the mace equipped means that you will not get anything out of it. It will be grayed out, and you will miss out on a chance to get rid of a weapon, which is, well, if you like it, you can keep it, and if you don't, you can get rid of it here. And 75 gold is beautiful. Because if you remember, the price to get rid of a curse was 180. And in fact, it has gone down thanks to our abilities. Now, Wrath of Food, I would really love to get rid of and it would make combat easier. But for the sake of this Let's Play, I'm going to keep this on. I'm going to show you what combat is like if for some reason you couldn't buy it off. Time distortion, though, I'm not too keen on. Just for kicks. I'm sure you're grateful for that. Top up on food. You never know when you might need it. Confirm my equipment is actually correct still. Yes, we're good. And we're ready to move on. Sail away and see what you will find. He knows you are here. He can smell you. One of these is the right way to go. We'll only find out if we give it a shot. Let's try the right first. Sure, a little bit of free gold. Ah, went a little bit quick, but uh, this time the Stranger in the Shadows actually decided to attack us. I'll just hit him back. Choose from these options. Uh, 
on this possible encounter. We get even more loaded. Of course, mages have their own rules. Power, mostly. Well, um... Okay. As unfortunate as that is, I can't do anything about it. I can do something about this. Again, a token is at stake. This DLC split off into two chains, and both chains do something and slightly interact with each other. The tavern attack is one of them. And it means we'll just fight through. But it's just a bunch of dust. And Jack of Dust. We really seem to be leading up to a Kraken somehow. And I decided to use the mercenary contract during this fight. That and the Assassin's Greed brought our gold right back up. Trade is so diabolical. But as long as there is gain, well, in your hands be it. Now we have enough to bid 120 health. This would leave us very, very low. But we have enough food to make it worth it. And more health means more successes. But nothing is guaranteed. Very painful. If we weren't so far away and could just walk it off. I would be a little bit more careful here. For now, let's try this. As you plunder the secrets of your memories, you'll gain new cards. Some you'll wish you'd left untouched. Still the Holy Forge taunts me. In case you're wondering, I bought the Hag's Wraps just in case. Because really, I've been using them a lot. But it might be worth seeing what happens if you don't use it and try to fight this fight coming up as fair as possible. King must be down here. My health is not great. And the shop only had one food items. Let's just beat them up and get it over with.
there's just about no reason to do this right now. Double check. Gelton King Sword, Innocence. The Goblin's Fight took my sword off me for just a moment. Let's use the last of our food. One of the times when heavy armor actually makes it harder to succeed. This chance event may become harder or easier depending on what you're wearing. Huh. But as it happens, this could be just about as fortunate as it gets. Meet the Lord of all pestilence, the King of Plague. I couldn't have timed this better than if I actually tried. Zero food no longer matters. Realistically, that's also why buying off the curse was not as big a deal. Because at this point, I don't care about food. I'm not moving around the board anymore. I can counter as much as I want. Let us stake a token on their foolishness. But the dungeon probably expects that you've been used to not countering, so... You're gonna keep trying to do the same thing. Let's see how this works. The King of Plague's attacks are supposed to be pretty hard to dodge. Let's take a look, because we are wearing heavy armor, but thankfully, we bought off the plague that makes him faster and deadlier. Wrath of the Old Gods help. And there is the King of Plague's leap attack. This is the King of Plague's shadow attack. So you've already seen two attacks. The King of Plague will leap on top of you and you don't want to be in the way. Uh, he has these unblockable attacks, one of which can rush towards you. He can also send shadows, and those shadows will charge at you. Do not stay in the way. I've got an ability that can help me regain health, so of course I should use it. And now that his minions are dead, I'm going to take advantage. You can see, just a little bit of chip damage, but it can add up over time. One, two, and then a third charge. He doesn't seem that threatening like this now that I've dealt with some minions, and I did come into the fight with a lot of health. But if you don't spend time trying to clear the map, and you try to get too far away from him, he can surprise you really quickly. And without the Hag's Wraps, I don't really have as good a way to control him as before. And see? I tried to pull off the Skeleton King Sword's uh, special ability, but got interrupted. If you can't buy off the curse like I did, you'll want to dodge a lot more. As it is, I'm fairly confident it is over. With so much gold in our pockets. The rats will take generations to recover from this. They must battle and battle to find a new king. We reach the end of days and the end of my reserves. You have taken near everything from me.
approach the final battle. The decisions. There's only one king left. The king of scales. And you can see the sword there. Our fourth MacGuffin. Our fourth prize. And we are almost done. I'll see you next time. And let's play Hand of Fate.